Bank of America says we hope conditions worsen for American workers in a leaked organization's memo. Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Thinking Out Loud. Today we got a really interesting article, I guess you could say. We got this one right here from The Intercept. It says Bank of America memo revealed we hope conditions for American workers will get worse. Got a subtext there says the financial behemoth privately fears that regular people have too much leverage. So of course guys this is coming out of I guess you might want to call a strong labor market right. Uh, we've had the great resignation with millions and millions of people walking off the job. Um, alongside that we've had you know somewhat of a resurgence in the union movement and the labor movement. Um, different strikes going on. Uh, people really uh, getting together, workers getting together and trying to leverage their power in a market where already um, some of these bigger corporations are struggling to fill positions. Now, we can have a debate as to whether it's truly a strong labor market um, given the realities of inflation getting worse, uh, trouble with supply uh, chain issues, you know, just the general uh, increase in the cost of living. You know, we can have a debate or a discussion about if you'd really call this a strong labor market, but regardless of if that's the fact of the matter or not, we are seeing workers just refusing to capitulate in one, one form of another, be they walking off the job, be they quitting, be they quiet quitting, as they are calling it, where, you know, uh, workers are kind of doing a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? calculated you know mediocrity on the job like you pay me fifteen dollars an hour you get fifteen dollars an hour worth of work right so we're starting to see all these things it's 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 coming alongside with also an undercurrent of class consciousness improving here in the united states and then we have this article here from the intercept that we're going to get into bank of america memo revealed we hope conditions for american workers will get worse it's a classic instance of um saying the quiet part out loud right but yeah, guys, let's go into this and do some of the reading. It says, a Bank of America executive stated that we hope, quote unquote, working Americans will lose leverage in the labor market in a recent private memo obtained by The Intercept. Making predictions for clients about the U.S. economy over the next several years, the memo also noted that changes in the percentage of Americans seeking jobs should help push up the unemployment rate. We're going to get into this a little bit too. Why, um, you know, they say it right here. Uh, in essence, you know, capitalism can never solve unemployment. Unemployment is a natural byproduct of the capitalist system, of capitalist modes of uh, appropriation of production and appropriation. You know, it's good for capitalism, for capitalists to have a large section of the, you know, population uh, unemployed. But going on with this here, guys, says the memo, a quote unquote mid year review from June 17th, was written by Ethan Harris, the head of global econ economics research for the corporation's investment banking arm, Bank of America Securities. Its specific aspiration by the end of next year, we hope the ratio of job openings to unemployed is down to the more normal highs of the last business cycle. So what do we have right there? Just perusing through that, reading that out loud there for you guys. Um, the memo, a mid-year review, uh, June 17th, written by Ethan Harris, uh, says, By the end of next year, we hope the ratio of job openings to unemployed is down to the more normal highs of the last business cycle. Now, I think it says later on the article, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but um, right now, the number for job openings to people looking for a job is like two to one three to one or four to one, something like that. So that means for every unemployed worker right now, you've got uh, potentially two, three, or four jobs that they could um, you know, apply for, that they could try to get. So what does that mean? That means if you have four potential, two, three, four potential job openings for every one unemployed worker, that means that that worker by default in the market system um, has some bargaining power, okay? Uh, so that means employers are struggling to fill these positions for all the various reasons that we've talked about. You know, people are just fed up. They're they're unwilling to work for bullshit jobs. They're they'll do a, a side hustle. They'll do, 
YouTube. They'll fucking do a day labor job for their money. They'll roommates. Uh, they'll sell off one car. They're, you know, workers are doing all kinds of things. Start an OnlyFans. Start doing commission paint. I don't even know. You know, workers are, are going on to a trend where they're they're doing anything and everything to either save money or 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 get work or do work outside of the general corporate employment system right now. So you have all these, and then we have the great resignation. So you have all these job openings, and each worker uh, that could potentially fill them has their choice of the litter, so to speak, right? And we can have a question about, you know, these jobs are open, and there's so many job openings because they're dog shit, and nobody wants them. So what this does is the worker has more leverage. Um, you know, you could go and apply. Let's say there's four job openings. You can apply for each and every one of them. Tell the guy that's doing the interview, hey, I also applied for this same thing, Target versus Walmart. And they're going to pay me $3 more. So, you know, if you can up that, maybe I'll consider, you know, working for you instead. So that's what it means right here when they say, by the end of next year, we hope the ratio of job openings to unemployed is down to the more normal highs of last business cycle. They don't like that. I think the normal situation, what ideally what they like to see in a healthy upturn in the market capitalists is like two unemployed workers for every job opening. Okay. They like that because then workers are having to compete amongst themselves for employment rather than the other way around. Let's do some more reading here, guys. It says the memo comes amid a push by the Federal Reserve to cool down the economy, informed by much of the same rationale that high wages are driving inflation. This year, the Fed has increased interest rates for the first time since 2018. Historically, this has often caused recessions, and that is exactly what appears to be happening now. The Commerce Department reported Thursday that the gross domestic product has fallen for the second quarter in a row, indicating that a recession may have already begun. Parts of the mid-year review, in particular its emphasis on a looming recession, received press coverage at the time of the memo's release to clients. This is the first publication of the document in full. So by now, I'm sure you guys have heard about this with the ongoing dialogue uh, regarding inflation. Okay. Um, the Federal Reserve has um, upped interest rates, okay, which, like they say here, you know, tends to dump the economy, turn, take the economy and turn it down into a downward slump, sometimes leading to a recession. And now there's, of course, a whole dialogue going on. You know, usually they say that two quarters in a row of either downward growth or a slumping economy is an indicator of a recession. I've heard some people talk about, I've read some articles saying that this is technically the third or even the fourth quarter in a row where uh, the economy's kind of taken a downturn, gone into a downward cycle. And then you'll have the White House right now obviously trying to prepare itself for November saying, oh, it's, it's not technically a recession because of blah, blah, blah. So we got that going on. But the really interesting part about this, and I'm sure we'll discuss this more as the article goes on, is they're trying to – you got your business class people. You got the Federal Reserve. You got officials all across the board uh, in the upper echelons of our society saying that this inflation is caused by uh, high wages right now. Okay. Uh, and regardless of that, the inflation has been going on for quite some time um, before we saw even any increase in wages. And we have seen some increases in wages, but realistically, man, it ain't much. It's like what? What's the average I think we've seen in the past videos is like 4 to 6% is the average raise in, in, increase and in what inflation's up 8, 9, 10, 11%, uh, depending on who you ask. So... By all in, in, intents and purposes, man, this is has nothing. This inflation has nothing to do with um, wage increases. And you know, when it comes to inflation, there's always some fucking excuse, right? The first thing we hear about inflation, it's uh, Ukraine. It's a war in Ukraine, and it's Putin's fault, right? Now it's working people have been getting a raise. So that's what caused inflation. Before it was those checks, the government checks because of the pandemic was inflation. What about the what? What was it? Three point six uh, trillion dollars they printed. The Federal Reserve printed to like bail out the airline industry and to, and to hand out those PPP loans that don't even have to be paid back. Three point six trillion or four trillion dollars printed literally over fucking night 
to big businesses that they use for stock buybacks and to cash out bonuses for every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the corporate ladder. And that don't cause no inflation. Price gouging ain't the result of the inflation. Being robbed at the gas tank or the rent thing, or uh, when you ca- when you uh, cut the rent check, you know none of that's fucking causing the inflation. But you know you and I, we got a four to six percent increase in wages, and I my wage didn't go up. I don't know about yours, but on average we got a four to six percent wage increase. Uh, you know as the inflation is going on, as all these issues are going on. And somehow that's causing the fucking inflation. I'm going to call bullshit on that. But, you know, I'll leave that up to you to decide. Going on with the reading here, guys, says, What the memo calls the ratio of job openings to unemployed is generally calculated the other way around. In example, the ratio of unemployed people to job openings. The more widely used ratio offers one measurement of the balance of power between workers and employers. The lower this number the more options unemployed people have when searching for work and the greater opportunities employed people have to switch jobs with better pay and conditions. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this ratio stood at 0.5 as of May, meaning that there were two job openings per unemployed person. Okay, so there's the actual statistic you got there. In 2009, at the worst moments of the economic calamity that followed the collapse of the housing bubble during the end of the George W. Bush administration, the ratio climbed as high as 6.5. That's fucking bleak. So there were more than six unemployed workers for each open job. It then slowly declined over the next decade, reaching 0.8 in February 2020 before COVID-19 lockdowns began. This recent unusual moment of worker leverage made Bank of America quite anxious. The memo expresses distress about a record tight labor market stating that wage pressures are going to be hard to reverse. While there may have been some one-off increases in some pockets of the labor market, the upward pressure intends to virtually every industry, income, and skill level. So there's a lot to take in there with that segment. Um, But, you know, the gist of it is, like I was saying at the very beginning here, mentioned in passing at the beginning, uh, giant corporations, capitalists, bankers, everybody that's on the opposite side of the fucking class war that we are right um like it when there's people unemployed it's a natural byproduct of the capitalist system they like it that way because it keeps workers uh fighting amongst themselves for the limited amounts of crumbs that there are uh keeps them in competition for different jobs which means when different when you have workers vying over each other for a job you can keep the wages down And they're going to have to deal with it if they want to put fucking food on the table and gas in the tank and the roof over their heads, right? Okay. And we can have a deeper discussion about this, about as long as capitalism exists as the dominant system on the planet, there will always be unemployment. Okay. And you've got every president since fucking forever. And every prime minister in Europe and politician all over the world talking about we're going to get unemployment down. We got to get unemployment down. Or if they're trying to get you to vote for them again and keep them in, keep them in office, it's we got unemployment down. Unemployment, somehow it's always unemployment. It's the lowest it's been in 10 years. Somehow it's constantly, you know, it doesn't matter who. It's, it's always somehow the lowest unemployment rate in 10 years. Amazing. We've done it. Right. Um. But this is the thing, you know, this is how capitalism functions. Um, It's good for capitalists. It's good for the quote unquote market for shareholders to keep people unemployed. It's just one of the examples of contradictions in capitalism is, you know, the need to have people that can buy the products, but also the need to keep people unemployed or under underemployed so that you can keep labor costs down. You know, and these are the sort of contradictions that, you know, when they reach a high point, tank economies cause recessions, cause depressions. And what's interesting in this too is this part here where it talks about, let's see, where is it? Hold on. Where it talks about at the height of the recession, the ratio, the labor ratio was at 6.5. So you had six and a half workers for every job opening, right? And then they talk about, so that was 2008 or 2009. And then it took 11 years to get it down to the normal, healthy, or whatever ratio. 
down to a, somewhat of a respectable ratio that that you know enough people are employed versus unemployed where it's good for the majority of workers somewhat as compared to the interests of the capitalist which is the best you're ever going to get under a capitalist system right it took 11 years to get to that point after the economic collapse of 2008 and then boom february pandemic economies crash around the world we barely avoid a huge fucking recession like 2008 because of the volatility in the market and then we're back to ground zero and this is how capitalism works man you know there's always these they call it the boom and bust cycle these recessions these depressions and they every time one of them happens it's the biggest one in fucking human history jesus christ but don't worry it'll never happen again this was unprecedented whoa where did it come from we were gambling away on the stock market and buying and selling people's house debt and fucking fucking shit up and just spending money and some we were fucking amazing that happened we couldn't believe it it's amazing but don't worry it'll never happen again and then it fucking happens every what seven to ten years it happens this is that what how capitalism functions and it's always going to be this way and you'll have an economy collapse and millions and millions of people around the world have their lives turned upside down and shit's fucked for them deeply deeply fucked think about the human cost the human emotional cost physical cost the, the cost to marriages the, the cost to communities the cost to children dealing with poverty that these boom and bust cycles cause and then over the next 10 years, we build it back up painstakingly. We all as working people make cuts and costs and maybe we decide not to go to college because it's a bad economy to be going to college. It's a bad economy to buy. So we put off our hopes and dreams and endeavors as human beings for a decade to build the economy back up. But somehow the economy is never built back up enough for us to be able to do the shit we need to do as human beings or want to do as human beings. And then it crashes all over again. We're back at ground zero. And somehow we've just fucking normalized the system to be like that. And we're like, it's what it is. You know? I worked so hard the last 10 years. I'm almost to retirement. I had $500,000 in my retirement savings. It wasn't really that much, but I would have been able to live a decent retirement. And then some assholes were gambling, and now it's worth 50 k <laughs> It's It sucks, you know? But it is what it is. I guess I'll just work till I die. But, you know, that's the system we've inherited, guys. That's capitalism for you. Got some more here for you guys. It says the memo recalls a previous Bank of America memo in 2021, which it says warned of a very strong momentum in the labor market, suggesting the economy would not just hit but blow through full employment. Fast forward to today, and these trends have been worse than expected. That's a quote from their memo. The memo is an uncanny demonstration that the economist Adam Smith was right when he described the politics of inflation in his famed 1776 work, The Wealth of Nations. High profits tend much more to raise the price of work than high wages. Hear that? High profits tend much more to raise the price of work than high wages. Smith argued, our merchants and master manufacturers complain much of the bad effects of high wages in raising the price. They say nothing concerning the bad effects of high profits. Funny how that works, right? Like we've done in past videos. The inflation's fucking price gouging. They're making record profits and then passing the, the, the cost of those record profits of bonuses and, sh and stock buybacks onto us to the cost of increased goods, right? They are silent with regard to the pernicious effects of their own gains. They complain only of those other people. I mean, that's what it is. Like we said at the beginning, too. There's always a fucking excuse. There's a war. There's a supply chain issue. There's a cost of oils up. Well, you you got to raise so the wages go up. It's never, uh, or the price goes up because your wages went up. It's never their fault. It's never private accumulation. It's never the capitalists that own everything, setting the prices, raising the prices is fault. Never. Never and never. It can never be their fucking fault. It's yours and I's fault for wanting a decent fucking living. Right. And just a quick side note right there, you know, Adam Smith, who wrote The Wealth of Nations, which you could consider the first real 
somewhat dialectical analysis of the capitalist system as it was coming into full fruition in the late 1700s and early 1800s you know he's a real pioneer he kind of gets lumped in with like friedman and hayek as this fucking douche this capitalist douche but really if you read smith and i'm not saying i've sat and poured over the wealth of nations with like my fucking monocle and or my bifocals and been like hmm, interesting I've never studied it quite like that, but homies used the spark notes. You know what I'm saying? On a couple of college papers. So anyway, he, you know, what I'm trying to say is he gets uh, lumped in with these fucking asshole neoliberals. But really, he was more, frankly, he was more like Marx in his analysis. Like he, he was very subjective and in, in, or objective and scientific about it. He was just analyzing the cl- the not necessarily class relations, but the market relations, a little bit of class. Uh, relations and i mean he would really shit on landlords called them parasites and things like that a little side note a little tangent for you guys so if you ever hear some libertarian fuckhead uh quoting adam smith you can tell him the fuck right off you know um but the main thing i want to touch on is somewhat go with this segment is going somewhat back on what i was saying here before it says uh bank of america memo in 2021 which it says warned of quote unquote very strong momentum in the labor market suggesting the economy would not just hit but blow through full um uh employment full employment so these banker fuckheads these capitalists are scared of full employment they don't want full employment going back i've already said it a couple times now okay unemployment is what capitalists want and they'll go on and on about how people are lazy and they don't want to work and nobody wants to work anymore, right? And I actually have this right here for you guys. is a fucking, you know, quick readout from 2022 going all the way back to like the 1900s of nobody wants to work anymore. This is an excuse they always fucking use, right? But what I'm pointing out here, what, I, what I'm trying to say here is they don't want full employment, okay? So our entire system is based on the idea of, of unemployment being normal. Nobody in this system has any desire to solve unemployment, to reach full employment, to give every human being that wants to work a decent job. They don't want it. They will do everything in their power like they're doing right now purposefully through the Federal Reserve causing a recession to ensure that human beings remain unemployed. They want it. They're terrified right here in their own fucking words. They are terrified of full em- employment because if you have full employment you have every human being reaching at least some degree of their financial um independence of their uh financial capacity they have the capacity if they're full employed if they have a job guarantee say for instance a federal job guarantee which under the new deal uh new deal democrats tried to impose at least in some degree a guarantee of employment for every human being that wants to work when you have that the capitalists have zero power so if you have the government coming in and saying like it did in the Soviet Union or other socialist republics coming in, or, or even, the, like I said, they tried to attempt under the New Deal to a certain degree. If you have the government come in and say, if you want a fucking job, we'll get you a job. And take it one step further, we will get you a job in the job that you are educated and, and profiled and skilled enough to do. You want that specific job, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a doctor, we'll get you the training, we'll fucking move you across the country, we'll put you in a house, we'll take care of you. You do that. You offer that federal level um, job guarantee to every human being, to every family. Capitalists don't have no fucking power hardly, even if they own the means of production. Okay, They still have the means of production, still have power in that capacity. But when you allow workers to have that federal job guarantee, that power is severely weakened because they can't pay you dirt anymore. They can't overexploit you. There's a bare minimal, right? So that's something I wanted to point out to you guys here. Going on with this here. A little bit of reading says, thus, exactly as Smith would have predicted, Bank of America complains loudly about the bad effects of high wages and raising prices, but appears to be silent about the pernicious effects of high profits. Because you fucking libtards don't understand that high profits is good for everybody else. It's called trickle down. It's called trickle down. You got a guy on top of a bunch of a pyramid of champagne glasses drinking all the champagne. And then he pees in the glasses, pees down the glasses. And we sit at the bottom and go, "Mm, mm, mm, thank you, master. Mm." Let's fucking trickle down for you, right? This is especially remarkable given the role that corporate profits have played in the recent increase in inflation. 
after tax corporate profits stood at 8.1% of the economy at the beginning of 2020, but have since shot up to a high, as high as 11.8% of the GDP. In an economy the size of the U.S., that equals an increase of more than $700 billion in profits. While we have hundreds of thousands of people dying in a pandemic, millions of people on the fucking street, no one having any access to health care. Great. Great fucking system. These higher corporate profits have been the cause of over 50% of recent price increases. We've done a video on this in the past, right? Fucking, it's corporate greed, not actual inflation. I mean, there's some inflation that's going to occur because of the many, many factors. Um, it's just part of what happens. It's been a tough time in the global economy. Uh, but that inflation should not be what it is. It should be in this the single digit, lower single digit percentage points inflation should be. The rest of it is just corporate greed, right? But yeah, right here, I mean, saying it again, Adam Smith, It's they're always talking about the price of wages, but never about the price of profits and what that does to our cost of living, right? But I want to point out this statistic for you guys and hammer it home for you. Um, at 2020, at the beginning of 2020, 8.1% of the national gross domestic product, the total value of the U.S. economy was corporate profit. Now it's 11.8%. That's a huge, and they're, they're you know, just showing how it's a huge increase in profits, $700 billion increase in profits during one of the worst times in American history, right? But even that 8.1%, guys, even that 8.1%, okay? Now, we hear all the time, that's, you know, roughly 10%, more than 10% of our economy now is corporate profits. Now, we hear, like I was trying to say, we hear all the time how we have the biggest and most dynamic economy in human history, the wealthiest fucking country in human history. We got all the money. And then you look at it, you know, the U.S. economy is worth roughly $27 trillion, I believe. But you'll have some economists that kind of dive into this and look at the way the American economy has been headed since the 70s, the financialization of our economy, the deindustrialization of our economy. And then you look at things like the way the corporate structure works now where they're doing stock buybacks and moving money around and speculating on currency around the world. And you start to ask the question right here, for sure, in statistics, 11.8% of that GDP is corporate profits going to rich assholes and probably being stashed overseas where it can't be taxed. That's over 10% of the GDP that they're officially saying is essentially bullshit. It's corporate profits. It doesn't do anything for anybody except a handful of rich people. But then you factor in all the things I'm saying, all this bullshit, all this fake money, all this fucking moving around, right? All this speculation, and then you start to ask yourself, how much is this economy really actually fucking worth? How much value does it really add to the human economy in the world? As contrasted to, say, Russia's economy, that's worth only about $1 to $2 trillion. But what's Russia producing? It's producing oil. It's producing minerals. It's producing lumber. You know, it's producing manufactured goods. Compare that to China's economy, which is about $17 trillion. What's China producing? Everything, bitch. Everything. So when you start putting these things by side, side by side, you start to realize that how much of this GDP is real. If they're out right here in the statistic telling us 10% is corporate profits that does nothing for nobody, then we factor in all that other bullshit I was talking about. What's it worth? What's it really worth? And you start thinking about it deeper and you realize that this economic system, that this political system is so deeply rotten through that its actual value is nowhere near that of what they're saying it is. Okay? And that is a clear sign of imperial decline, of U.S. empire decline, of a system that is so rotten through that it is very nearly, we could make the case, on its knees, economically. It's a lie. It's artificially inflated. You know, you'll hear some economists talk about China passed us years ago in terms of real value of GDP real addition to the human global economy and compare that with the u.s it's, it's just not the same you know 
So you got to ask yourself the question I want to drive that home to you guys is like, where are we really sitting on the global stage right now as far as what we contribute to the global human economy? You know what I mean? But I'm rambling there with that, guys. Um, a little more reading here for you guys, and we'll try to tie it off quick. I'm sorry there's so much reading, but it is an interesting article. Um, instead, the memo is focused on the enticing prospect of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, slowing the economy, and bludgeoning workers back in the line. The perspective of working Americans would generally be exactly the, the opposite. Obviously, we don't want that, do we, guys? For most of us, it's fantastic to have a lot of jobs available with employers competing for you. Fuck yeah, it is. I've gotten away with a lot of shit at work recently because they don't want to lose me because I do my job and they, no one else wants to do the job. A tight labor market is wonderful. Wage pressures are great. From this viewpoint, the key issue right now would be to lower inflation while keeping employment and worker power high. Such attack would include full bore attempts to lessen supply chain issues and reduce the pricing power of big corporations. Most interesting of all is that in Bank of America's enthusiasm for the Fed going on the attack against working people, it gets the basic facts wrong. Wage pressures have turned out not to be as its memo claims, hard to reverse. If you did see continually accelerating wage growth, it would be a problem, Dean Baker, senior economist at the Center for Economic and Policy Research, a liberal Washington, D.C. think tank, told The Intercept in an email. God, that's a mouthful. That would almost certainly mean a wage price spiral with even higher inflation. However, nominal wage growth has slowed sharply from around 6% annually to just over 4% in recent months. So Bank of America wants the Fed to raise rates in unemployment to attack a problem accelerating wage growth that doesn't exist in the world. The memo therefore tells us that we sus what we suspected all along, the most powerful economic actors in the US, entities like Bank of America and its clients, do not like working people to have power but it's nice to have it in their own words. Harris, the author, was not available for comment. No surprise there. That's a bad look, Harris. That's a bad look, bud. But we all know it's how you think. So, so yeah, that last little bit there, guys, and I'll end this video here quick for you. Um, they're, you know, doing the bullshit with the interest rates with the Federal Reserve to try to tackle inflation because they, they say that it's uh, the wages going up causing the inflation, but it's... It's not real. It's not real at all. It's it's in their fucking heads. And this is the thing about it, though. This is the thing about these capitalists, these people in this bank. They don't get it, man. It's not just that they're trying to do this for control. I mean, that's a big part of it. They don't. They they see the embers of a labor movement. They they like to try to stamp it out. There's that. But the guy writing this memo, I don't think he fucking gets it, dude. They're in these high rises, these glass fucking towers rubbing elbows and drinking champagne and fucking each other's wives. And they're up here having a great time. And they don't get it. They're not connected to reality. So in their little world, in, 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 the, in the world of Ethan Harris, he believes that the militant workers in their fucking wages going up is causing this problem. He believes that. These capitalists believe that. These politicians in Washington, a lot of them, they believe in the fucking wars and the corporate subsidies. They believe it's the way. They believe in the neoliberal order. It's the, the ruling ideology, the cultural hegemony of the ruling class. They fucking believe it themselves, most of them. Now, that's not all of them. You got some really pulling the strings. They know the bullshit. But this is what's really shocking to me, man, to think about. Just the, what I, the point I want to end you with is these fucking people believe it. Because they don't live in reality. Our entire society, our entire political system, our entire economy, our economic system is ran by people that are completely out of touch with reality. They might as well be high on Xanax and fucking wine drunk in the middle of the day. Them's the people. You know, Percocet Pelosi and her gang. You know, high on fucking Coke and barbiturates Wall Street man. Pulling the fucking puppet strings of the economy. Cooking up wars in the fucking Pentagon. These are the people running the show, dude. They don't live in reality. These are our fucking masters, and it's scary. You know, it's bad enough having a ruling class that dominates and exploits us. It's always been bad. But Jesus Christ, these people are high, man. 
this generation of ruling class is fucking high and they're going to lose it all, man. And we can have a discussion as to whether that's good or bad. In the long run, it's good. But in the short term, it's bad for us, for those of us living through it. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. I just wanted to share this article with you, have a brief discussion uh, about it. I'm sorry if it wasn't the best video. Kind of went on some tangents. got a little weird on you. But I didn't want to share this with you guys because it shows the thinking, the detached from reality thinking, the hubris, the, the complete madness of the people that are running our economy. You know, and I, it just points very clearly out as well the distinctions in this class war. Okay. The interests of the people running the banks and running the corporations is fun to, fundamentally opposed to your interest. And there is no way to reconcile those things. No way to reconcile those things. As a working person that pays rent and has to work a job, your interests will always fundamentally like down to a physical fucking level, molecular level, be at odds with those of the capitalist class. And this article just so succinctly, this leaked memo just so succinctly makes that clear. This is the way they're talking about us in their, in their little work emails. How are we going to fuck them over today, right? But yeah, guys, like I said, that's all I have for you. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to drop a comment. Let me know what you think about this memo. Leave a like, all that good stuff. If you guys want to support me on Patreon, you know where to go for that. Link in the description, link across the bottom. But um, as always, guys, it's great hanging out with you. I love you very much, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye. And I know.